strap in, because I'm gonna walk you through over 200 new features and changes in iOS 17. Welcome everybody to Apple Insider. This is going to be a long video, so use the chapter markers down below to find the sections that you care about. I'm gonna walk you through over 200 features and changes as part of Apple's new iOS 17 update that is now available to download on your iPhone for absolutely free. So go get downloading, and while you wait, let's walk through all the new features and changes in this massive update. The first new iOS 17 feature I wanna talk about is called Standby Mode, and it's enabled automatically whenever you place your phone on a charger, whether a MagSafe charger, a Qi charger, or simply plug in with a lightning or USB-C cable. When it moves into horizontal or landscape mode, standby will automatically enable for you, taking over your entire screen, turning it into a secondary display. There are multiple modes for standby mode. So for example, here we have like the widget view. On the left, we can rotate between these different widgets. On the right, we can go between these additional widgets. By holding down onto the screen, we can enter into kind of like an edit mode like you would be doing on your home screen of your phone. You can go through, add additional widgets by tapping on the plus button in the upper left hand corner, going through all the different ones that you have. You can add a photo widget, boom, just like that. This will also work with third party widgets. There's features like Smart Rotate that'll automatically change those and widget suggestions. Go ahead and tap on done to lock it in. So now I have reminders, a calendar, weather for different areas, and even this photo one that I just added at the bottom that will pull in photos from my iCloud shared photo library. Left hand side again, you can edit those widgets. By swiping left and right, I can move over to my photos. So here's the photo view. We can swipe up and down to go through different recommended photo albums and go into the right one more time. This is the clock view. There are different clocks that you can cycle between, world ones, colored ones, and these you can also go in and edit just like with the photos and with the uh, widget views. By going in, you can change things like the accent colors. So if you'd have it more orange or green, whatever you prefer your colors to be, you can change those on these various clocks. Couple additional things to mention. This widget mode here, this will work with third party widgets. So when I tapped and held and I tapped on plus, you can see we have things like airmail, we have Chrome, coffee book, all these can also be supported here inside of standby mode. Live activities look great in standby mode. They can even take over the full screen so you can see what's going on. Another cool feature with standby mode here is it'll automatically dim the display when it doesn't detect anybody. And then if you move again, it'll go ahead and wake the display back up. If you don't have an always on display, you can simply tap on your phone, see so you can move motion, see if it'll detect me again. Just like that should wake up the display or you can tap on the phone, tap on the table, anything like that to re-wake your phone up. If I invoke Apple's assistant, how many cups are in a gallon? It will take over the full display, giving you a nice little smart display that you can see, which is great for if you're using this maybe in the kitchen or anything like that. When you have music or anything playing in the background, it can take over the full screen, but you can swipe up and it'll live as a little live activity there at the top of the screen. And you can pull it up again just to bring it back full screen. Of course, you have full media controls, including volume, airplay, and player pause controls. Notifications look great on standby mode. They'll take over the full display and the display will automatically dim at night, giving you this really nice red night mode for your standby display. As an added benefit, it'll remember MagSafe chargers. So if I move between different chargers in my house, one on my desk, one on the nightstand, one in the kitchen, whenever it goes back to that uh, MagSafe charger, it'll remember your preferred view and it'll go back to that as soon as it's placed on there. So it'll remember different locations that you use standby mode in. Now we're gonna move over to the lock screen. Here you can see we are sporting the new iOS 17 wallpaper that is included, but we have a few other nice ones included too. We're gonna go here, we're gonna to go to the right, add plus, and let's take a look at some of the new ones. So astronomy, before we did have earth and we had like the earth detail and the moon, but now when we go back, so earth is much more detailed than before. Let's go ahead and take a close look comparing the two different versions. Here you can see the old earth view versus the new earth view there on the left. Uh, it's much more detailed and realistic looking. Beyond that, they also show your location. So when I first went into this one, it did pull up my location there on the map so it can adjust based on the time of day and your location. 
Then we have new views for Venus and Mercury. These also will adjust based on time of day, whether it's like daytime or nighttime on these various planets. There is a new kaleidoscope wallpaper. So we go in here, there's various styles you can choose between. So red, purple, all of those. These have automatic light or dark appearances. So you can choose if you want them to be light, dark, or switch automatically with your system version. You can pull in your own photos that it can base these off of. And of course it still supports widgets, time, and everything like that. Live photos can now have motion effects. So you can see here's one of my son Harrison early on. It has this little motion icon in that lower left hand corner. And then basically when if I had set this as my wallpaper or lock screen, so we're gonna do head set this, set it as both. And now every time my phone wakes up, he will move. It's really adorable. So we'll kind of lock my phone, I'm gonna wake it back up. And yeah, there he moves again. So you have this live animation for any live photos. Speaking of the suggested photos here, now that depth effect where the person will kind of go behind the clock like we have down here uh, for a photo shuffle, these will now work on these photo shuffles where you have a bunch of different photos where it'll put the person kind of above the text. It's a really cool looking trick that they do and they now work with photo shuffles. We're back to customizing this one. Tap on customize and lock screen. Let's look at widgets. Here you can see that Apple has modified these widgets a little bit for activities. You can see we have all the rings and all of our different goals here versus we have kind of just the one move goal and the move goal there. For the health widgets, not only do we have medication, but now we have a new one for state of mind. We'll talk more about state of mind when we get into the health app. Finally, for the home widget, if we go all the way to the right, we have a new option for grid forecast. Again, we're gonna talk more about grid forecast when we get into the home app a little bit later. Moving on to the home screen. Widgets are now interactive, which is super cool. So you can see we can actually hit play and pause right here on these little widgets, but there'll be a bunch of first party Apple widgets that are updated, I'll talk about those, and third party widgets can also be interactive. So you just can be able to tap on widgets themselves instead of having to open up the app and then go back to your home screen. It's really cool. You can even control smart home accessories, control music playback, all of that kind of stuff. Apple's photo widget can show you featured photos, which it could do before, but now we have new options for albums in small, medium, and large options. The books widget is also now interactive, allowing you to control playback of any audiobooks from the books app. You saw it here on the home screen already, but the podcast widget has been updated. It is also now interactive. You can see we can play and pause our podcast episodes. The Apple News widget has been updated. Now this too, interactive, control playback of any audio that you are listening to inside of the news app, such as the top audio stories of the day. The context widget has been slightly redesigned. It can now show their location, messages, and even shared photos from that person. The up next widget for calendar in this medium size now will show your upcoming appointments here. So before we we'll just show them on the left and then a grid view of the month on the right. Now it'll show just all of your appointments in kind of a list. There's also a new small mini date view for calendar. The clock has a ton of new widget styles. See so clock one, two, three, city, multiple cities, all these different ones that you can choose from. So a bunch of new clock styles of widgets. Files has a new small view for recent. It used to just have medium and large. Just like on the lock screen, the fitness activity or the activity widget has been updated. So you can see we can see all three rings on both the medium and small versions of the activity widget. The music widgets, there's a ton new here. So we have recently played, which was similarly named before, but now we have all these new ones for recommendations that are here and top chart widgets. So I think six new musics in total, widgets in total for music, and they are all interactive. You can see what is playing there at the top and control that playback directly from the widget itself. Stocks now comes in a medium and large for the symbol. So before we just had small here, I believe. Now we have medium and large when you're looking at a specific symbol ticker. Once you've added a new widget, say we added just a clock widget here, you can actually shake your phone and undo adding it and it'll revert to the previous layout, which makes editing your screen a lot easier in case you make a mistake. Lastly, for these widgets, iPhone widgets can now show on the Mac. So for example, I like the Dexcom G7 widget here on my phone, and it can show here in a little smart widget. That actually can now be shown on my Mac desktop with macOS Sonoma. It is super cool and it's a great way to keep any iOS specific widgets visible on your Mac while you're working at a desktop or laptop. Spotlight search is even more powerful. Apple has reworked it, so now when you're searching for something, things like even app shortcuts can appear right here inside of Spotlight search. 
settings can also appear here. So if I started typing in screen time, you can see we'll have a shortcut directly here into the settings app. I can also start searching for things like videos. I can find in the Photos app videos that I shot in Columbus. I can scroll through them and jump deep directly into the Photos app. Finally, if you type in something like a phone number, an email, an address, you'll have quick actions. So I type in a phone number here, and I can FaceTime them, message them, or just straight up call them. The AirPlay menu is now more intelligent. It'll automatically change the order of this based on what it thinks that you're going to use at any specific time. So maybe at a certain location, you always jump to your Sonos Move, while whenever you're home, you always jump to the Studio One. It'll automatically update this list with those near the top. These AirPlay suggestions can even show as a notification that'll pop down on your screen to allow you to quickly connect. Plus, AirPlay will now be supported in hotels, so when you go to a hotel, you can AirPlay directly to supported hotel TVs. AirDrop has a number of new updates this time. First off, there's NameDrop, which will allow you to transfer your contact information and your contact poster to others just by bringing your phones together. It even works with Apple Watch. It's easier to start a share play session, again, just by bringing your phones together, and transfers can continue over the internet. So if you're transferring a large video from one person to another, you can start and initiate that transfer, then leave, and it'll continue to transfer over the internet, though this won't be available directly at launch. Plus, all these have really cool animations. Now, we have some new features coming to AirPods with iOS 17. AirPods Pro 2 have a new feature called Adaptive Audio. It'll automatically adjust the ANC levels based on your surroundings. It'll increase the ANC if it's loud around you and decrease them if it's not very loud. Conversational awareness is also new. It'll lower the media when you start talking and boost voices of people around you so you can more easily hear them. Plus, it can reduce background noise. And personalized volume, which will automatically adjust the volume based on your environment and location. Maybe you like it really loud at the gym, but you don't need it so loud when you're sitting at home. You can press the stems on AirPods to mute during a call. You can double press when in a call to end that call. And there's faster device switching. Apple's digital assistant no longer requires you to say, hey, first. You can just say the name of Apple's digital assistant and she will start listening to you. You can also do back-to-back -back requests. I'll give you a demo. What's the temperature like in Columbus, Ohio? What about in Dublin? So just like that, we had back-to-back -back requests without having to re-ask Siri what is going on. It knew the context and was able to do these multiple requests, which is really handy for controlling smart home accessories. And you can even cut Siri off in the middle of her response to ask an additional question. Apple Digital Assistant also recognized third-party apps better. So if you usually would say, hey, text this person in WhatsApp, now it'll remember that. So next time you go to Ask Siri, it'll automatically do it through WhatsApp and you don't have to tell her to use that specific app every single time. You can have Siri read things to you, so we have something in the reading list. We can actually have Siri read this stuff to you, which is really handy. And finally, Apple's digital assistant is available during phone calls. So while you're on a call with someone, you can ask Apple's assistant questions and she will be able to get back to you. The person on the other side of the call will hear your question, but they won't hear Siri's response. Here's a few cool additions to the camera in iOS 17. For the camera, there's a new level tool that you can turn on or off. So we go back here to camera, you can see it's right there on the screen and it would give you a horizon lock if you were facing it actually forward instead of straight down. In video mode, you're also able to lock the white balance. So as the light changes around you, the white balance on screen will not change. Moving on, let's look at the Photos app. One of my favorite new additions to the Photos app was debuted during Apple's Wonderlust iPhone 15 event. And that's the ability to change the focus on a portrait mode photo. So here you can see we've got Harrison sitting in his little walker thing. And if I go into edit, I can actually tap on that background and change the focus. So now he's blurry, but the background is sharp. Or tap on Harrison, now he's in focus and the background sharp. So you can change the focus after your shot, which is incredibly cool. You can now create your own stickers directly here from the Photos app. So here we have a picture of a car, uh, just my wife's car here in the driveway. I can tap on the car itself and you can see we can kind of pull it up. So this has always been a thing, you could pull this up. But now when we select that subject, we can add it as a sticker. This will pop up here at the bottom and I can add a different effect or rearrange any of these stickers. So if I hit add effect, you can see we had an outline kind of like a traditional sticker. I can add a comic effect to it so it looks more hand-drawn. 
puffy, like old school puffy stickers. They actually have a depth effect, so as the phone moves, the light will shimmer. Similarly with Shiny, which has a shiny glittery effect like holographic stickers that will react to the movements of your phone. Let's go ahead and just put an outline on that. Perfect. You can see we have other stickers too. Harrison down here was pulled out of a photo and it's a moving sticker. So you can have live stickers, pets work, basically anything that you can pull from the subject of a photo. The People album is now the People and Pets album. So not only will you have people in here, but all of your fine furry friends will also show up. We have pictures of Mosby will show up in here. See all these dog photos. It'll actually recognize pictures of Mosby, put him into this album. It'll know pictures of Oliver, put Oliver into his own album. It's really cool that it can detect animals' faces just like it can people. It works with cats and dogs. Apple also says that the People and Pets album is more accurate than it is in the past. When you go to edit a photo, if you move in on a little bit, there'll be a new crop button here at the top. I can tap that and it'll move it directly into the crop tool where you can further adjust it to where you'd like. Also, if you do make any edits like adjustments, these can be copy and pasted into other photos. It makes it really easy to move edits between multiple photos, even in batches. Plus, when sharing media, whether photos or videos, you have a new option where you can change the format. So you don't have to be stuck with HEIF, you don't have to stuck with HEIF. You can move it to a JPEG or if you want to move from um, HEVC, the high efficiency video codec to just MOV, you can do all of that here from this share menu and options. With memories, you now have the option to add additional photos or videos to these memories. So if there's ones that you want to add, you can do that. Plus, you can rearrange the order of memories as they present on your phone. Apple has also made improvements to visual lookup. It can do things like actually recognize laundry symbols. It can also pull different people from a photo. It works on videos now, and it'll work on recipes, maps, and other information that it didn't support before. Let's take a look at Apple CarPlay. CarPlay and iOS 17 had a few notable updates, but it's not the big major redesign that we've been waiting for. To start, there are new iOS 17 wallpapers. They're easy to find from the settings app inside of your CarPlay interface. Apple's digital assistant has an updated design inside of CarPlay, and there's a better design when sending and playing back messages, which include larger tap targets. Finally, there is SharePlay for Apple Music inside of CarPlay that allows passengers in the car to scan a QR code and automatically add their music and control playback of your group playlist. The Maps app, it has now better EV routes. It can show charger availability on your route and can search for chargers based on the plug type or network. And there's even support for offline maps, which is huge. Select an area, save it to your phone. You can manage that. You can see if they are downloaded or not. And you can remove that data when you're done with it and know how much data it is taking up on your phone. So just remove it once you've completed that route or you're done with your trip. Let's take a look at the Messages app. In Messages, Apple has reworked the search. Now you can add multiple terms. So I wanna first add messages with Foley, then maybe I wanna add an additional search criteria or another filter for ones with photos. Can filter those down, and I can start to see the messages from that person that include photos. By the way, messages can also now filter and sort everything by SIM cards if you have multiple SIM cards in use. When you jump into a message and you missed a bunch of messages, which happens in group conversations a lot, there'll be a new arrow on the screen that allow you to jump up. This is called catch up and it'll allow you to just get back to where you left off in that conversation and read on from there. You can also now swipe to reply on a message. So you can see we had that little bubble just come up. I can type my response there and send it as a direct response to that message. If I wanted to do it to this one, I could respond there. And these are just inline threaded responses that are really easy to do instead of having to tap and hold and then hit reply to that specific message. It makes even more sense inside of group messages. If you have friends or family where you're sharing a location, their location will now be listed directly below their name and their picture inside of the Messages app. If you are ever sent a lewd photo here in Messages app, they will now automatically be blurred and you can choose to view them or you can just prefer not to see them if you don't want to. Apple has redesigned the Messages app just a little bit. You can see the app drawer is gone here at the bottom and it hasn't really gone. It's actually just moved inside of that plus icon. That's where the camera button and the photos icon have also gone. I can tap on plus and I have all of these apps I can choose directly here from Messages. So camera, photos, stickers, cache, audio, location. But I can either swipe up 
or tap more to get to all of my other message applications. These can be rearranged so I can move them up and down, but by default they're just in alphabetical order. One of the first new message apps to check out is Stickers. So this has been updated. You can see we now have all of our various sticker packs included just in this one message instead of split out into separate applications. We have new options for emoji. So emoji can now be sticker. You can add these just as you would anything else. Just drag them on just like you would a sticker, pull it up, pull it into the conversation. These are now stickers. We also have the ones that we've created. So you can see our Jeep that we added, Harrison, Harrison moving, cat, all of these are the ones that you created or you can create new ones from here. We have new Memoji stickers, including Smirk, Angel, Halo, and Peekaboo as new ones. You can see them right here on row three. It's now easy to send your location directly from messages. You don't have to go into like the settings or information review. You can just tap on location here from that plus button. You can either drop a pin and send your dropped pin. So if you're standing on a specific street corner or somewhere inside of a park, you can send that or you can share it for periods of time just like you normally would. When recording audio messages, you can actually pause it, do what you're doing, and then add to it. So I can continue adding, stop it again, continue a conversation, add plus. All this can be sent as just one single audio message. Check-in is a new feature with iOS 17. So this will allow you to check in with another person um, whether you have maybe somebody sketch coming over to your house or you were on your way somewhere to class and you want to make sure that you get there safely. So you can use a timer. So maybe if you had a plumber coming over, you want to make sure everything was on the up and up. You're doing an eBay sale or something and you're just kind of waiting for a specific, specific period of time to end to make sure that you're okay. You can do it based on a timer or you can do it when you arrive. So you can choose a location that you will be navigating to. And then once you get there, it'll go ahead and end. But if you don't get there or you pause along the way, you can automatically send an alert to your emergency contact that you have set up here and send the check-in request. You can control what kind of notifications are sent. So when you check in, when you arrive at the destination, if you are delayed or do not respond when prompted or your phone just suspiciously goes offline. You can control what kind of data is also shared. So you can put in limited information, which will include things like your Wi-Fi signal, cellular strength, battery level on your phone, and battery level on your Apple Watch. It'll also include your location, or you can do full, which will show you your routes along the way, where your phone was unlocked, where your watch was taken off, and when they were last unlocked or when it was removed. Apple Cash can now have reoccurring payments. So if you're sending somebody an allowance or a regular set of money through Apple Cash, that can now be done. Text messages forwarding and SMS filters will sync more easily across devices. MMS messages, they will have new effects like tap back effects, replies, all those can show for MMS groups now. And we have a new option. And whenever you get any two-step verification tap, and if you get any two-step verification codes sent to your messages, once you autofill them, they can automatically be deleted and cleaned up from the Messages app. Looking at the phone app now. The phone app has a new voicemail option. It'll actually replace the one from your carrier. It'll include a new ability to transcribe the voicemail in real time and see what they're saying. You can then answer that call while they're leaving a voicemail or just let them go to voicemail. You can also hit them quickly to voicemail and if you have silence unknown callers turned on, they'll automatically go to voicemail so that you can screen them before you answer. We have new contact posters. These are these kind of full screen things that you can create that will have your information, your picture, graphics, colors, whatever it is that you want to do. You can create these for other people, but they'll also automatically be shared with your contacts that opt to share them with you. You can have different voicemails for different SIM cards, and it's easier to reach the buttons while you're in a call because they've been moved more towards the bottom. FaceTime also has a new voicemail option. So if you don't answer a FaceTime call, somebody can just leave you a message. You can watch it and call them back, FaceTime them back later. It's really cool. FaceTime can also automatically send unknown callers directly to voicemail, and you can share your name and photo automatically when on a FaceTime call. There's a new share option inside of FaceTime that makes it really easy to see what you can do, it's like jumping into freeform, watching a movie together, anything like that. And you can trigger cool on-screen effects with things like thumbs up, which are really awkward when you're like on camera, like on camera, on camera. It's a whole thing. But yeah, there's new on-screen effects that you can trigger via gestures or just taps on the screen. With the final version of iOS 17, Apple did add over 20 new audio tones. Let's go ahead and check out a couple.
Yeah, so more than 20 new audio tones added for your phone to messages in iOS 17. The Health App. One of the new features in the Health App is called State of Mind. It allows you to record your mental state of mind. There's a bunch of information around state of mind being added here. So there's state of mind assessments, logging your state of mind, mental health assessments, and mental health resources. We can go ahead and walk through this kind of process. It talks about supporting your well-being, benefits of logging, emotion versus moods, begin. So how do you feel right now? How have you felt during the day? We go ahead and move on to the next one. You move this slider down and there's kind of these cool little graphics that go along with it. They feel very Apple Watchy. Go ahead and tap on next, move. So what kind of things impacted your day um, or what best describes that feeling? So confident or amazed, move next. And there's things that impacted that day. So maybe fitness or weather were in there or other ones that you want to add. All this will probably go into the new journal app, though the journal app won't be available here at the launch of iOS 17. And of course it wants reminders if it wants to log, but you can go ahead and skip that. So yeah, you've gone ahead and logged your state of mind, but there's a bunch of new fitness tools or mental health fitness tools here in iOS 17. Screen distance can be recorded if you have kids set up inside a uh, family sharing to actually track how close they are to your phone's display or their iPad's display. There's a new option for time in daylight. So I can actually see uh, yesterday I spent 48 minutes inside of or outside in daylight. Uh, you can manually track this, but it'll be pulling in from your Apple Watch, which is really cool just using the brightness sensor inside of your Apple Watch that you're wearing on your wrist. And we have a redesigned favorites area, which shows many views of the graphs and charts that you can jump into to view more information. Oh, and if you have any medications or vitamins added, you can now add a new reminder. So it'll pop up and alert you to take that medication. And then if you just skip it for a while or don't log it for a little while, it'll go ahead and remind you again to make sure that you have in fact taken your medications. We're gonna move to Safari, but part of that is the ability to now share passwords and pass keys with family members. It's really cool. Just go ahead and add people, pull these from your contact list and you can share any of your passwords. So family passwords, maybe like health insurance, login information, whatever it is, but you can all share those now, which is really, really helpful. And another way that you could use Apple's password manager instead of a third party password manager. Here in Safari, you can now actually use autofill from the mail app. So if you use two-step verification, send it to your email, it can now automatically enter that inside of Safari. So here I am in Safari, and if I do go over to the private tab, this is now password protected. So you have to either enter your password, face ID, or touch ID to gain access to your private browsing. Private browsing also has its own stuff set up now, and it'll automatically remove things like your link tracking. That'll all be removed when you're in private browsing mode. Apple's also added new profiles, and each profile has their own history, cookies, extension, tab groups, and favorites. Let's look at the music app. First thing in music app is Apple now has finally collaborative playlists, though that won't be available at launch. There's also a new playlist available just for your favorites. This was a huge thing before you would favorite a song and it wasn't there. Now there's specifically a favorite playlist so you can go to any of your favorite things that you had and it'll work not just for favorite songs, but for favorite albums, artists, and other ones that you have favorited over time. It's really handy to have it here on your phone. Music can now have crossfade, turn on or off, and you can change the duration from one to 12 seconds. This is a heavily requested feature that's finally showing up. Also here in the music app, we now have the option to view song credits. So by tapping on that, we can view credits. Finally, some albums will have animated artwork to go with them for the album art. This one doesn't, I've been trying to find them, but yeah, some of these are supposed to be animated and take over more of the full screen. Here we are inside of the home app. First, if we go into security, there's a new option that'll appear after just a moment. It'll be the activity for the day. So activity history, nothing for today, but here's what showed before that. So the deck door opened a bunch of different times and you can see any other changes. So this could be a lock going on. So yeah, there was a lock, contact sensors moving, motion detected, any of that can all be logged here inside of activity history. We also have a new option here for energy. So this is our grid forecast, and this is based on different locations. So based on your energy usage, it'll tell you when it's good to maybe use more energy versus less energy because they're pulling from cleaner energy sources. Maybe in the evening, because the draw is not as big on the grid, they'll start converting more towards renewables instead of coal or oil burning. So Apple's giving you kind of a forecast here. There's not much you can do with it at the moment, but I can see this being used for automations down the line when things like appliances or EV chargers are tied here into the home app. 
Finally, as I kind of had mentioned before, the home widgets are now interactive, so I could control things like any of my accessories, lights, all directly from the widget without ever having to open up the app. This is a huge one, but you can now share accessories. So maybe you have keys or the living room remote, whatever it is, you can actually share this AirTag with another person. This is huge because then you won't get all those alerts that maybe, the, like if I took my wife's car, it would always ping me that an AirTag is following with me. No, I just have her keys and vice versa. This makes it so much better. The Reminders app, now it actually supports grocery list. These will automatically get broken down into grocery categories. And you can even change where things go, like maybe if you want to put things into a different category based on where they are in the store for you, you can do that and the Reminders app will remember that. There are new sections, there's a new column view, and even more new features. Let's get a closer look. There are now series suggestions for reminders. These will be based on ones that you make a whole lot. So maybe watch Ricky, I watch my brother's dog a lot, so it'll remind me about that. Um, or maybe I do something with uh, shipping information, I have to do that frequently. So I can create a reminder to do those based on tasks I've completed and do repetitively. All generated based on on-device machine learning. When creating a new reminder, you have a new option to get alerted, not just to the time of the reminder is due, but before that. So you can actually control that time more granularly so you can have it before it's due and not just when it is due. Of course, you can also check off reminders from the new reminders interactive widget. Inside of the notes app, there'll be now full width inline documents and PDF. They look a lot nicer here instead of just the small little picture that they used to be before. PDFs, by the way, also have new form detection and it'll work in things like files, mail, even online. When you're creating a note, if you long hold for just a second, I guess right here, or tap for a second and go to add link, you could put a URL, but now you can type in another note. So I could type in like important note right here, but this one's plural, so it's slightly different. So like that, I've added a link to a different note and I can tap on that one and boom. Look at that iPad, good computer, wife is amazing. That is a very important set of notes. Block quotes can be added into the notes app and you can even move a note into pages directly here from the share sheet. Just right there, open in pages. The clock app finally has multiple timers. It'll show recent timers down here at the bottom that you've made. Any of these timers you can just start again and timers can even have labels. Maybe this is potatoes, the next one is turkey, the next one is pulled pork. Whatever your timers are, that way you'll actually know what they're for when you are setting multiple timers. And these can be sa saved as presets so you can jump back to them at any given time. And these will all show as live activities which is really handy right there on your lock screen. Inside of the Stocks app, it will now show relevant news articles from Apple News. So here we're looking at AAPL and here are some news about Apple pooling in automatically. So you'll kind of see relevant events from the stock ticker that you're looking at. Inside of news, Apple now has puzzles. This is so cool and I love it. To find them, you just kind of scroll down a little bit in the news app. It kind of changes its position, but yeah, here we go. So latest puzzles. Uh, there's a big puzzle and a small puzzle. And if you go to more puzzles, you can actually see them for previous days. So you can change them. I'm really hoping they add more besides just crossword and crossword mini, cause this is pretty sweet. I really like doing these with New York Times. And it's cool that Apple has now built them into its own native news app. When you're looking at the weather application, there is now a new option for wind. So you can add wind overlays here inside of the Apple weather one. Plus we have a historical data. So if I'm looking at like the time for today, so there's like Monday, we can also go back and view Sunday. So there's no information for chance of precipitation because it already happened, but I can see how the weather changed throughout the day and moving on to today. It'll pull in more historical data too, and there's even better animations, just lots of cool little trends and improvements here to the weather app. Podcast app, of course, has that new widget that we saw. There's a better up next queue, so we have whatever playing, and you can actually see kind of what's showing up in the queue after that. So of course, we're gonna listen to some HomeKit Insider next. I think that's a great option to listen to. There's new search filters that you can use here that are just like messages, so apply multiple criteria and see them all at once, and just in general, better playback controls inside of wallet. Now apps can actually verify you based on your ID. So if you live in a state that supports IDs in the wallet application, they can now verify things like your age. They can get really secure, limited information from your ID. So maybe if you're trying to buy some booze for delivery through DoorDash, they could verify your age before they let you do it. It's a pretty cool way to actually do things super securely and then you don't actually have to hand somebody your ID at a later point. 
there's better tracking for orders and you can actually automatically add orders here um, manually based on things like an email through supported retailers. It's kind of cool. Plus just in general better order tracking though I still wish more places actually supported this. For Apple TV users there's a couple new options. First, we have the ability to actually find our Apple TV remote. So if I go here to the Apple TV widget and I go to something like bedroom, studio, whatever, there's that new find button. So here in the studio, I can tap on find and it'll bring up like find my controls for the Apple remote. It's really cool they were able to do this without any additional like hardware. There's no like actual like find my chip or anything. Just using your standard Bluetooth signal to help find your remote. So I'll leave my phone there, but I'm gonna move the remote around and yeah, we're getting closer, closer. Yeah, it's here. There we go, we found it. So if it's in the couch, anything like that, you can use the Find My App or you can use the remote control feature inside of your phone to find your physical Siri remote. Plus we have FaceTime support on Apple TV and, and plus we now have FaceTime support on Apple TV. You can use your iPhone as the camera and take a FaceTime call from your television. It'll automatically find you based on that ultra wide angle lens, zoom in and keep you in frame using center stage or pan out if you have multiple people that you're trying to get in camera at the same time. Support things like gestures for showing animations on screen and a bunch of different effects for lighting. That was quite a few new features, but it's not even all of them. There are so many more that I didn't even get a chance to touch on. So stay tuned to Apple Insider because I'll be sure to keep exploring and find what's coming in Apple's next major update. So what do you guys think? Thank you for hanging out with me today and going through all these new features. I am excited for this update. I think it's one of Apple's best updates that they have delivered. And I'm excited to hear what you guys think. Let me know down below in the comments or on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. You can also let me know on threads at Andrew O'Hara 941. And stay tuned. I'm going to cover Apple's other new releases very soon.